Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south. More specifically, we are here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I uh, we, st we went to Unicorn World yesterday. I'm here with Jen. And I mean, we figured we actually stayed the night here in Charlotte because Jen was curious. She wanted to see the sights, the sounds, the smells, the tastes of Charlotte. So I figure, uh, figure I would show her around the city today. And uh, what do you know? What do you like? What do you think of Charlotte so far, Jen? What do I know, or what do I think? What do you? Yeah. What do you think? What is your first impressions? Um, I wanted to see the Panther Stadium. We saw it. We did see the Panther Stadium. Yeah, because of Sir Purr and the Sir Purr is like the mascot. The mascot. Yes, he's the cutest little kitty mascot ever. The cutest kitty mascot. Ever. And working in banking, I heard that Charlotte's like the banking place to be. Oh, so you're doing some bank, some bank <laughs> tourism. <laughs> yes. Touring so. the financial district of yes. Charlotte. Yes. And um, yeah, I like it. It's very green and nice. Like I'm just in like. A t-shirt so yeah it was a little cold yesterday a little warm, oh my goodness warmed it was up, so cold warmed up a yeah, little bit so today it's a lot better but we're in front here of a statue a figure known only as metamorphosis <laughs> now unfortunately it does not look like metamorphosis is working today um, I saw some other videos online it looks very, very cool. This whole thing like rotates and moves and shifts. It spews water. Water spews from its mouth into the fountain. It turns its head different directions. Today it's not moving. I don't know. And I'd like to I just ask anyone out there, anyone from the area, anyone uh, familiar with metamorphosis, leave a comment in the comment section. Is it broken for good? Is it functioning? I thought it was fun. I thought it was functioning. I looked it up. It looked like it was functioning. But um, maybe there's an on button. And on, I did look. I did look to see if there was like some trigger or something to turn it on. It doesn't look like it. It looks actually, if you look at the face there above the nose, it looks like it may have um, like stopped like mid morph, like as it was turning. I don't know if it's broken down. Again, if you're from the area, if you know about metal morphs, just leave a comment in the comment section, letting me know um, if it works, if it's on a schedule if it works only certain days and um yeah we'll figure out uh figure out from there maybe i'll have to come back over and catch it if it's working maybe they only run it during certain seasons maybe it's a summertime uh, sculpture although there is water in the fountain i know sometimes they'll turn off fountains during the winter but there is a good flow of water there we could go swimming you want to go swimming in the, in the metal morphosis yeah. go ahead go ahead <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if I actually went like, all right, there goes Jen. I, I would be concerned. <laughs> but yeah, it's still pretty cool. Like it's still, it it's still a pretty cool, just giant weird face. But I definitely want to see this in action if it actually ever is in action sometimes. So let me know if there's a good time to come back and catch Metamorphosis in action and uh, leave a comment in the comment section. So we've come over here to uh, one of the top tourist attractions here in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Billy Graham Library. Now, a lot of the presidents have their own libraries. I've traveled to quite a few presidential libraries, but this may be the only library for a preacher. Billy Graham, one of the most famous uh, preachers of all time. And over here next to the library, you have the Graham Family Home Place. This was built by uh, Billy Graham's father in 1920s. And I guess it was moved a few miles, yeah, it says it was on Park Road, just a few miles east of uh, this site. So they actually moved this whole home um, to this location. So yeah, pretty surprising that they're able to move a brick house several miles down the road. Wonder, uh, I don't know, wonder if they just took it apart brick by brick and reassembled it or threw it in the back of a really big truck. Or I don't know, maybe they strapped to a couple of helicopters that lifted it out of here. Either way, they did a good job. You see the library itself is actually shaped like a barn. It's got the silo there. You got that big window in the middle shaped like a cross. Hello. Oh, well, hello. Hi, come on in. Welcome to the Billy Graham Library. Well, here we are. There you can see it looks like a barn in here. And this is one of my favorite parts of the museum. They have this animatronic cow 
that tells you about what uh, Billy Graham was like as a child. I don't know if she's going to tell her story here in a minute, but uh, look at this adorable, look at this adorable little cat there, it moving around. His little tail moves. Yeah, Wang's little tail. That bat there says Billy Frank. I wonder if that was Billy Graham's baseball bat. Maybe his middle name is Frank, I think. Or Fra is it Billy Franklin? I think his son is Franklin Graham, so maybe Franklin. Maybe it's Billy Franklin Graham. Oh, there it goes. Well, hello there. You come. My name is Bessie. Bessie. I love that song because it comes right out of the book of Psalms where God said, Every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand feet. <laughs> Woo-hoo! Imagine that! Why, I bet you're surprised that I can do more than just mmm. Did you know that cows were created on the sixth day? Six day. The very same day that God created man. That makes us kind of pretty special. And did you know that of all the animals that entered Noah's Ark, the Bible lists cattle first. Huh. And guess what? One day, every living thing, including cows, will praise the Lord. Won't that be a miracle? You know us old milk cows. We love living at the Grand Berry Farm. Oh, you can see the but other, other cows back there moving when their I tails. I Billy Frank's cold hands at milking time, 5.30 every morning, I'd swish my wet tail right across his face. <laughs> Gotta admit though, Billy Frank never got after me too much. I think every time he sat down for breakfast with a cold glass of milk, he appreciated my special gift. Mooey! Now be sure and get you some of that good old cold milk in the dairy bar before you leave. Oh, okay. They serve Billy Frank milk here at the dairy bar. Bible school. I sure did miss that boy. But we heard through the barnyard chatter that God was using him in a mighty way. And he was preaching God's good news to everybody who listened. While when Billy Frank was young, he practiced preaching to tree stumps. And he even practiced some while milking me. <laughs> I practiced preaching while milking the cow. Do you know what the good news is? Well, you're going to learn all about it here today. Billy Frank went on to preach that good news to millions of people all around the world. Some people call him God's ambassador, the pastor to presidents, the leading evangelist in the world. Coming here out in front of uh, this cabin. Oh yeah, that cat in the window is moving. Oh, so there's a really itchy cat. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by for a visit. I'm certainly delighted to have you here. Oh. Ruth and I have welcomed so many friends Say, here Billy over Graham. the years. Hologram. And you know they all had one thing in common. At some point in life, they were all looking for peace. It's the greatest need of our hearts. Jesus Christ. May God bless your time here today. As we come in here, it's the billboard there. We have a replica of this uh, tent revival that uh, Billy Graham did in uh, Los Angeles. Let's see, there's a, a newspaper stand over here. Oh yeah, apparently Billy Graham says no to movies. They're on the front page. Oh yeah, look at this old it's an old uh, newspaper stand. They're selling pipes. It's like uh, lottery tickets and candy bars. There's some boot cream right there. Yeah, you can see his visage there outside of the tent. See people gathering here in the tent to uh, watch the film about uh, Billy Graham. There is quite a few films here in uh, in the museum. Your sins forgiven, your burdens lifted, your problems solved by turning your life over to Him, repenting of your sins 
Alright, guess we head out of the tent this way. Alright, next we head into the room here dedicated to Billy's wife, Ruth. There's their wedding photo. Then you have Ruth's wedding dress here. And then Ruth's personal Bible. See, she's made a lot of notes, a lot of notations in there. Let's see here, there is a recreation of Billy Graham's uh, radio studio. It said he filmed his uh, radio show Hour of Decision in here. I guess they have some of the same gear that he would have used when uh, when recording that. And you can see a television studio here. Shows some of his different uh, TV appearances. There's Larry King right there. Johnny Carson over here. Some of Billy Graham's personal items and paraphernalia in there. I got this cut out here. Here is a Presidential Medal of Freedom. This was given by Ronald Reagan. And there's one of Billy Graham's Bibles there. This is one of his preaching Bibles. I think he had, he may, he may have had a couple. And here we have Billy Graham's motorcycle. It says this was a gift given to him in uh, in Tokyo. But uh, as, as fun as it would have imagined, apparently he never went for, never took this out for riding. He actually gave it uh, gave it to his son. The appliance store here. You see Billy Graham preaching in the window. And there's all these televisions inside playing uh, images. Yeah, we got civil, civil rights there. I saw this gun in the case. I was like, is that is that uh, is that Billy Graham's piece there? But no, apparently he met with uh, met with uh, gang members in Harlem, and uh, one of the gang members turned over uh, turned over his gun to Billy Graham. I guess the the word of God that Billy Graham was talking it uh, convinced him to give up his life of violence. Hello. He talks here about how Billy Graham teamed up with Roy Rogers and his horse Trigger there. Actually, you can go see Trigger, the taxidermy Trigger, at the John Wayne Experience in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And then here's Billy Graham's bridle for his horse. His horse's name was Buxephalus? Buxephalus? That's an interesting name for a horse. Buxephalus. Brought each of us here for a purpose. It is my prayer that God may set us ablaze with fire from off the altar. The Holy Spirit is described as wind and fire. Some items gifted to Billy Graham, including this Native American headdress here, gifted to him in 1974. You can see the beadwork there actually has uh, Billy's name emblazoned on it. Oh, I didn't realize this. They actually had a Billy Graham pavilion at the New York's World Fair in 1964. The Billy Graham's boots there and some pieces of the uh, Berlin Wall that he picked up. Oh, and look at this. Picking up the uh, Berlin Wall. We've got the Berlin Wall room in here. Oh, you can see the, the guard there in the guard booth. And I remember when this happened, when uh, Billy Graham passed away in 2018, they did a 130 uh, mile journey from Black Mountain, which is near Asheville, to Charlotte. And all along the way, people were parked, standing on bridges to, uh, to see the procession. I never saw Billy Graham I know I never did not see his body pass by, but I did see people um, waiting to see him when this is all going on. You see, this is Black Mountain, North Carolina. You see the people there along the main street as uh, the funeral procession passed by. Yeah, there is uh, his funeral right here at the Billy Graham Library. You can see them removing his uh, his coffin from the hearse just right in front of this building we're in, because he is actually buried here on the museum grounds. 
Now this is actually very interesting. The casket that uh, Billy Graham was buried in, he wanted a simple pine box. So it was actually constructed by inmates at the Angola prison in Louisiana. I've actually been to the Angola prison museum there. It's, you know, pretty notoriously rough prison. And they carved the, uh, the inmates that made the casket, carved their names into the casket. And then right there we see Donald Trump in, in inspecting the insignia carved there by, uh, by the prisoners. Wonder if Donald Trump's thinking that he wants a similar casket. He may have different tastes. Yeah, you look here, you see that, uh, the casket, the one made by the inmates. And it's actually, that's the cross that we entered through. So it's sitting here right in the lobby of, uh, of this, of the Billy Graham Library, the attraction we're currently in. So yeah, the animatronic cow would have just been right there. Whatever your race, whatever your religion, you need Jesus Christ as a person in your life. He's not a creed, he's a person. We head out here through the cross. We exit through the bookstore here, and I guess, you know, this is the Billy Graham Library. You can actually see there's stacks of books up there, so whenever I go to the presidential libraries, often I don't see a lot of books. But here, at the Billy Graham Library, there's actually an extensive collection. And there's one more artifact here. This is uh, Billy Graham's pulpit. Actually, this is the pulpit that he would uh, would preach at. So that's pretty cool, and I guess you can do a photo op here behind the uh, behind the pulpit if you so choose. Here's the other side of his pulpit. You see the microphone there. And it's actually like a high-tech pulpit, probably for the time. It's actually built by IBM. And I, I guess there's a light time button. I don't know what all the buttons do. I guess, he, oh, it's like raised lower angle. I guess he could change the angle of what he was reading. So a very high-tech pulpit that he would preach at. When I saw this statue here, I seriously thought this was supposed to be Johnny Appleseed. It's got bare feet. He's got seeds in his hand. He's got a Bible, of course. Johnny Appleseed was a traveling preacher. Alas, this is not uh, not supposed to be Johnny Appleseed. This is just a, uh, I guess, a tribute to preachers of all, all different kinds, people that uh, travel and spread the word, I guess these seeds being the word, the words that they spread. But uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe some inspiration. I'd say maybe some inspiration from uh, Mr. Johnny Appleseed. And the cow at the front, Bessie mentioned this, they have a, a milk bar here, a dairy bar to get some snacks. And then you can actually dine in one of these like stalls, like for a cow. Here are the graves of Billy and uh, Ruth Graham. There's Billy, passed away in 2018. Ruth passed away in 2007, and she has a Chinese character on her grave. She's actually born in China. Her parents were missionaries, so they put the Chinese symbol on her grave. And then it says, uh, this ins the inscription here says, end of construction, thank you for your patience. It said that one time she was driving down the highway, saw a sign that said that, and said, I want that on my gravestone. And so they put it there. We've traveled over here to Elmwood Cemetery in Charlotte. You can actually see the, uh, the skyline there from the cemetery. It's actually a very interesting grave over here that I wanted to check on. I can see it right there. The grave of John King. You can see, actually has an elephant on his uh, on his grave, and the reason for this is um, is <laughs> a little upsetting. Actually, you can see here, in memory of John King, it says right there, killed in Charlotte, 1880, by the Elephant Chief. Chief was the name of the elephant. He was killed by an elephant. So only fitting that they put an elephant on his grave. Yeah, you also notice it says 
Johnny Roberts Circus there. The, uh, actually put the name of the circus he worked for. He was a carnival worker and um, was actually uh, killed by an elephant that said the elephant intentionally crushed him. The elephant was tired of, uh, of listening. He was a trainer. Now, as I've traveled across this country, I've continually encountered a tale, a tale as old as time, if you will, the tale of the murderous elephant. Often elephants will kill their trainers for, uh, for whatever reason. You know, maybe the elephant has become disgruntled, does not want to be in captivity, does not want to be told what to do. There is uh, the infamous story of Mary the Elephant in Irwin, Tennessee, who killed her trainer during a parade and was executed by hanging by the neck. There was an elephant out in Coney Island that was uh, electrocuted by uh, electricity. Tom Thomas Edison actually involved in the electrocution of that elephant. And uh, several other, there the Peru, Indiana has the skull of a murderous elephant. Sioux City, Iowa, they have the skull of a murderous elephant. And then here in Charlotte, they have our own tale of the murderous elephant chief. It says that John King here was, uh, was an elephant trainer says that the elephant crushed him, smushed him, crushed his head. You know, we don't have any information on why the elephant made this decision, if he was. I don't want to say that he was being cruel to the elephant, because we simply don't know. But the elephant, uh, for whatever reason, decided it was best to smash his head. And um, the elephant was not initially um, executed. It was actually sent to a zoo where it lived out its life, but the, the elephant the elephant was still full of rage. The elephant actually killed two more people while at the zoo in Cincinnati. And um, at that point, they decided to execute the elephant. And apparently, um, this is where it gets a little disturbing, they killed the elephant at the zoo. They executed the elephant. They had a parade where they brought the elephant's dead body through the streets of Cincinnati. And then they butchered the elephant, they chopped it up into pieces, and hosted a feast where everyone feasted on freshly executed elephant. Makes me wonder how old John King would have felt being crushed by an elephant, to have an elephant placed on his grave as a reminder of how he was crushed. And um, it says here, uh, what does that say? Johnny, Ro I think it says Johnny Robert Circus. The grave's a bit faded, a bit worn away. Possibly, I've, I've heard, when I was a kid, people would go out, they would encourage p kids to go to graveyards and put paper on that and make an etching. I don't think that's good for graves. I think recently they, they've kind of put a halt to that practice. They found out that it was actually um, disturbing the grave, so it was harming the gravestones. So it is a little faded. But um, yeah, John, John King, um, killed by an elephant and buried right here under a marker of an elephant. It's, it's, it's interesting. You know, maybe, maybe the elephant's a tribute. He was a alpha trainer after all. But then again, you know, they put right there that he was crushed by an elephant. He was killed by an elephant and they put an elephant on the grave. I do think, I do, I have like, uh, you see this at older graves. You never see this in new graves where they put right on the gravestone how you were killed. Um, <laughs> Again, I don't know. I kind of like that idea. I kind of want on my grave it to say how I was killed. If I if I get killed, I mean, it's not. I, I may die of old age. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I'd like to know. I like people to come by, that visit me in the cemetery, know how I was, uh, how I was killed. Not anything about my life. Not how I lived my life. Not what a person I was. But uh, what sort of animal crushed me? We're here at the busy intersection of uh, Queens and Province Road here in Charlotte. I'm actually standing in the median here because there is a very interesting statue here in the median. This is Old Man Traffic. See the name here. This is the statue of Hugh 
McManaway. Now Hugh was a eccentric local character. He's actually a wealthy man. He uh, inherited a, a large sum of money from his parents. But uh, Hugh's passion was not with money, not with financial gain. His passion was directing traffic. He felt this intersection was dangerous. He felt people could get hurt. There was so much traffic here. So Hugh took it upon himself to direct traffic all day, every day, for 20 years. So he would come out here dressed in his golfing hat and he would direct traffic using a dish towel and he would stay out here for 20 years, 20 years he stood in this median directing traffic, telling people where to go, how to remain safe. It said that not everyone heeded his directions. He was not working in any official capacity. He had no actual authority. He was just trying to help out. He was just trying to be a good citizen, trying to help keep the flow of traffic moving. And he was such a beloved character and such an institution that they erected in 2000, they erected this statue here of Hugh McManaway, old man traffic. And uh, you can see he has decorated that big bow there. I've come by here a few times and he's always dressed differently. People will uh, dress him up for special occasions. I don't know if that's a big uh, Valentine's bow that is left on him. And also looks like he's got a little yellow flag there. I think that might just be like a little, what does that say? Underground pipeline, something like a little underground pipeline flag that someone just tied to his finger there. But yeah, beloved member of the, uh, of the Charlotte community. Old man traffic, Hugh McManaway. Old man traffic, old man traffic. Just keeps on directing, just keeps on directing. All right, so we've gone on a journey. Went to some of the uh, interesting spots and locations here in Charlotte, North Carolina. What do you think, Jen? What do you, what do you feel about Charlotte? I feel that I'm hungry. You're hungry. <laughs> Right before we are doing the outro, I was looking at looking restaurants in Charlotte. So the adventure will continue, but I do like it. It's really pretty. Like the architecture is really pretty. And um, the Billy Graham like location was super pretty. Just like, I don't know, like they just picked like the prettiest place. To, it was all yeah, flowery and I like the cow and the kitty. Uh, the animatronic cow is definitely a highlight for me. Yeah. yeah, I don't come over, even though I live about two and a half hours from Charlotte, don't come over here all that often. Um, but I'm always looking for, you know, new interesting places. If anyone knows of any interesting places in the uh, Charlotte area that I should check out in the future, please leave a comment in the comment section. I'm gonna have to check out like the toy store scene here oh, yeah, for the see next what time of, we what come. What sort of toy stores are here? Yeah, it's already getting late, so I don't think we'll be able to go today, but another time. We can come back and yeah. what is, see the toys. You're looking for food. I wonder what 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 the the quintessential Charlotte. Yeah, that's dishes. what I ask you every time I'm we not go sure. somewhere. Yeah, I like to eat when I go to a city. I like to eat what um, kind of what the city's known for. I just can't even come up with anything that, that Charlotte is known for as far as food goes. So. I kept thinking of Charlotte Flair, and I know that she has nothing to do. Yeah, <laughs> I assume she doesn't have anything to do with Charlotte. She also is not food. So. <laughs> I mean, I think she, is he from? Ric Flair know. lives in Charlotte. That's oh, like really? Yeah. <gasps> Can we go visit Ric Flair? Yeah, you didn't know Ric Flair was from Charlotte? No. Yeah. That's why they call Charlotte Flair Charlotte. Because Ric Flair was from like Charlotte. Bailey. Yeah, Bailey. She's named after where she's from. Can we go visit them? I don't think he likes guests. I don't know. He seems swell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, I envision that he has like a giant boa draped over his house and like you ring his doorbell and he's like, woo! We're going gonna, to gonna drive over to Ric Flair's house? Yeah. He's probably not in town. He's probably well, whenever we gonna... wheeling, dealing, jet riding, limo. <laughs> jet riding, limousine, no, jet flying, limousine, riding, wheeling, dealing, kiss, kiss stealing, stealing, son of a gun. 
There we go. You got that pretty good. I honestly, I had a note on my phone at one point of it. You were studying I wanted that. To memorize you wanted it. to be able to, to, to well. I didn't know that the time, opportunity your would time come. Had come. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us today. We're. I think we're heading back home tonight. I don't think I ever really answered Every what I liked about Charlotte. You said you like. You said the, you said it was pretty. You said you liked. Oh, the yeah. No, I just felt bad. I was like, I don't know if I answered you. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're uh, I think we're heading home. We're gonna get, grab something to eat, head home. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna be in the I'm gonna be in the general area of home for the next little bit. Wanted to actually enjoy the house a little bit. Still planning on uploading videos. I'm just gonna probably stick to um, more local stuff. So again, yeah, stuff around Waynesville, North Carolina. If you guys want me to check out? Leave a comment in the comment section. But of course, uh, if you like these videos. Please subscribe. I travel around the country from roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. Also, check out Jen's YouTube channel, Jenny Penny, yes. on YouTube. And uh, if you'd like to help support the channel in other ways, consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars more, get your postcard once a month. Also, selling enamel pins and uh, doing personalized messages on Cameo. Of course, all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this elephant crushing your oh, head until next that was time. such a sad story i wasn't i didn't oh poor elephant okay anyways go ahead this one's in the bag